Hey guys, welcome to the channel Learning Competitive Programming with Coach. So if you want to learn competitive programming and get a good hold on data structures and algorithm, this is the prime location for you. Every week there are several videos on editorials of Code Chef contest as well as various videos which will enhance your skills in competitive programming and DSA. So if you are new to the channel, then do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification. So myself Shrayu Jain, I'm a Code Chef educator and now we are learning sorting algorithms and we are taking selection sort today. Okay, so guys, let's understand the concept of selection sort with the help of some intuitive example, right? So here we can see three boys standing in one particular row. Now, as usual, when we go to the assembly in our school, the teacher wants that the child with the minimum height should be at the first, and then in the ascending order, uh, he or she arranges the child in the queue, right? So similarly, what we can do is we will try to arrange these three boys in some ascending order. Right, so that is the basically the idea of sorting, right? To arrange anything, any sort of thing in some ascending or descending order, right? So that is that is the major idea of sorting. So, what the approach should one take? So, one approach can be in this particular case. So, let's see all the boys first, and the boy with the minimum height should be separated from the rest of the boys. Okay, so this is the boy which will come first. Then, from the remaining part, we'll select another one which is greater than the first one which we selected but is minimum from those particular lot of boys that we have, right? So there are two things, two parts. One is uh, the part in which we are adding the boys with the ascending order of heights and the remaining part is from which we are selecting the boys, right? Okay, this particular boy will be now after this. Then this particular boy will be now after this, right? So what she can do is, first of all, she'll uh, see the heights of all of these three boys and then she found out that the boy at this particular second number is having the minimum height so what she does is she separated this boy okay so this is the first boy that should come in our queue now we have the remaining boys here right so this one and this one so now again she goes to the this particular uh, row and then she sees that this boy this boy the first one boy in this part right so this is the first part and this is the second part so this boy is having the height which is minimum in this group not the whole group the minimum in this group because this is the separate group now so now what she does is she select this boy and then she made to this group right and now only we have one boy remaining right so what she does is that she select now this boy and then add it to this group so now we can see that the row of the boys right is in the particular ascending order so this is the basic idea of selection sort so we'll go into the details that what is selection sort why do we prefer selection sort and what is the real idea and how we can code selection sort but get an intuition that how we can just you know click into our mind that whenever we are performing any sort of operation so like this type of animations and this type of you know idea can directly jump into our mind when we do write this sorting algorithm right so this is the major idea uh, like how we are going to proceed in the selection sort so now let's talk of the beginning of selection sort that what are the basic understanding what are the definitions of selection sort and go forward with it Okay guys, so we have seen the example and the intuition of selection sort basically. So like this intuition help us to remember certain kind of things for a longer period of time. So that is why it is like a uh, approach to first build the intuition of the particular algorithm and then we'll just study what are the basics of that algorithm. Right. So now let's study about some of the important things, key points of selection sort algorithm. So selection sort algorithm sorts and so first of all, what is sorting? So sorting is arranging an element in a particular ascending or descending order. Right, so this is the sorting, simple and a clear cut definition of sorting. Now, it's, this algorithm sorts an array of elements. So, how does it do this sorting is by repetitively finding the minimum element. Right, so as we have seen in the particular example, the intuition example, that how we are finding the minimum boy and thus just separating it out from that particular lot, which is not sorted, which is not arranged. So, we are every time at every iteration, we are taking the minimum boy and placing it out so this is the whole idea so what we do is we always select the minimum element from the group of unsorted elements right preferably an ascending order because we are trying to sort everything in the ascending order so that's why we are selecting the minimum element right and putting it at the beginning so this particular lot is the lot which is sorted and this is unsorted so we'll try to get the minimum out of it and put it in this slot right from the beginning right so first the smallest then uh, the one who is greater than smallest then again the one who is greater than the second one so this is how we arrange the elements right 
So this is the whole idea. What is selection sort and how exactly we're defining the selection sort. Now the second point is the algorithm maintains two subarrays in the given array. So obviously one is the unsorted array and the other is sorted array. So we are trying to take the element out from the unsorted array and just try to append in this sorted array. So we have to maintain two subarrays in the given array. Correct. So we'll see in detail how we are doing that, right? With the help of an example, it is just to uh, give you some points regarding the selection sort. The third important point is the left part of the sorted sub array and the right part, the left part is the sorted sub array and the right part is the unsorted sub array, right? So obviously in the left part, we'll take all the elements which are sorted and in the right part, all the elements which are unsorted. So we'll segregate the whole array into these two parts and how we'll segregate what how we are maintaining these two things we'll just see in the example and the approach right and the fourth important point is that it is an in place algorithm right so this is the important point what is in place algorithm means so the in place algorithm is an algorithm which does not require any extra memory like for example we have been given this array and we need to sort it so within this array just by some manipulation or something we'll give the output that is the sorted array will not take any extra array or any extra memory to get our output right so these type of algorithms are known as in place algorithm which do not require any extra space so in this selection sort we will not take any extra space right so we'll see how we'll do that but these are some important points to list out for the selection sort so now let's move on to the examples and the approach for this particular selection sort okay guys so now let's start with the example of selection sorts so we have understood some key points regarding the selection sort now it's the time to really deal practical with the selection sort that how exactly the selection sort is working right so let's see here so here we have this particular set of numbers and we want to sort it right and with the mechanism of selection sort so what we do Right, so we start with this number, we start with this number and set it as the minimum number, correct? Now for this place, we want the minimum number uh, that should be present in this array, right? So first of all, as we set this number as minimum, so we we'll compare it with, it with its next number, that is 11. So out of these two, what is minimum? Obviously 11 is minimum, right? So that means that this number cannot be at this place, right? There must be some another number or maybe this number, right? So now the minimum shifts from 20 to 11. Now this number is indicated as minimum. Similar process will go on and we'll compare this minimum with the next one, next number. After comparing these two, we found out that nine is smaller, right? So now we set nine as minimum, correct? The same process will repeat. Now we'll compare nine and 14. So obviously 14 is not less than nine. So the minimum will remain same, that is nine. And at last we'll compare nine with Two. So obviously 2 is minimum. So now the minimum is updated to 2. That means at this particular index we got the minimum element. Right. And for which position we are demanding the minimum element that is for the first position. Right. So the actual candidate for the first position uh, more precisely for the 0th index is this one. This number. That is number 2. So what we will do? We will swap these two. Right, so 20 will come at this position and 2 will go at this position. And now after the whole first process, the array comes to be this one. Or the set of numbers comes to be this one, that is 2, 11, 9, 14, and 20. This is the whole first step. Now, this array passes to second step. Since we got the number at position 0, at index 0, right, so now we will find the number at this position, what number should come at position 1, that means index 1. So basically I am referring position as index number, right? So what are the indices here? That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? These are the indices, right? So we want now the number at index 1. Index 0 is already sorted out. So that means that this array becomes our sorted array. That means the left subarray and this subarray becomes the unsorted one. So as stated in the definition of selection sort, we need to divide the array into two parts within this array, right? We did not to create any extra space here because this is an in-place algorithm, right? So we divided the array into two parts. That is first part that is the left subarray is the 
sorted one we are keep adding the sorted things over there and the right sub array is the unsorted one right so this is the unsorted array and this is the sorted array now we are finding the uh, correct uh, candidate for the position one so how we can do this is by repeating the same process we will take 11 as minimum and compare it with 9 of course 9 is minimum right if uh, 9 is lesser than 11 so we will update the minimum as 9 now we compare 9 with 14 so obviously 9 is smaller than 14 and we will update we will check 9 with 20 so obviously 9 is minimum. so for this position the actual candidate is 9 so we will swap out these numbers now the array comes like 2 9 14 uh, 2, 9, 11, 14, and 20. So after the second step, the array comes out to be this. So we can repeat the process again. We'll repeat the process again for this actual for this position, but we can see that now the array has start, sorted out. We can see that the elements are present in the increasing order. Right. So at this step only we got our answer. But like if in some other examples, we can just try out all the possible things. We can just look at all the possible uh, elements here, all the possible locations. And we can find the actual candidate for that, right? So, in many steps, you can complete this particular uh, unsorted array to sorted array, right? So, we can see that in the step number two only, we got our answer after the swaps, right? So, this is how we are dealing with the example of selection sort. And you can also notice that this number of swaps required are only two here, right? Here and here only, right? So, this algorithm, why it is important is because it uh, sorts the array in minimum number of swaps and moreover it is an in-place algorithm which do not require any extra space so whenever there is a need where you don't have the chance to let memory to any of the particular arrays then you can apply this particular selection sort right so our uh, time complexity is not optimized as other sorting algorithms but you can efficiently use the memory over this algorithm right so this is the key benefit of this particular algorithm so we have seen that how an unsorted array becomes the sorted one right so this is the whole process now we are going to code this whole similar process right we have understood each and everything that what is the definitions what are the techn technical terms associated with this and we have seen the example how everything is working how we are bifurcating into two sub arrays right now it's the time to actually implement this particular algorithm in c++ so let's see it okay guys so this is the code chef ide on which we are writing the code so here i have pre-written some code that is like the main driver function so what it does is it has n as equal to uh, n equal to 6 which means that we have an array of size 6 right so like here what we can do is just rather than declaring n we can just make the static array that as 6 right we did not to take uh, declare n because we are learning uh, the algorithm not the driver functions right so we have taken the array of size 6 and the elements are like this so what you can do is if you want some dynamic things you can take the input as well from the inputs right and then we're calling this function as selection sort and then passing two things here that is array and the length of it right that is six so the main logic comes into this function so what this function is it does not return anything but it has two things in its argument that is array and n right so as far as we have seen the logic so how to create that logic so first thing is we need to set every positions right there are two parts left sub array and right sub array so initially left sub array uh, uh, left sub array is nothing but slowly and steadily it increases because we set each and every positions right so till what position we need to set you need to set all the positions of course not why because you need to set only n minus one positions this is because if let's say an array has length n, right? So if we automatically set n minus one positions, then the last position is automatically set, right? Because if we set all the n minus one numbers that this is the correct position, this is the correct position, this is the correct position, the last element which is remaining is always at its correct position, right? So the first thing is for n i equals to zero, i less than n minus 1 sorry n minus 1 i plus plus we need to set the positions this is the for loop. now the second thing firstly we need to take the minimum value we need to set the minimum value so we'll take a variable that is mini 
and set the minimum value. So for the ith position, we are finding the actual candidate. So we'll take whatever the value at ith position as minimum. So this is the minimum, correct? And now we need to search the index which is the actual candidate. So we'll initialize the index with i. Let's say that i is the the uh, element at ith position is the actual candidate. Let us assume. Let us say. Now we need to traverse the remaining right part, right? So for int j equals to i plus 1, j less than n, j plus plus, what we will do? We will search the right part and see that whether any number exists which is smaller than the minimum that we have. So if array of j, right? So if array of j is less than mini, that means the minimum number we have. So what we will do? We will update the mini first. That is minimum will be equal to this array element. And we will also update the index. Why we are taking index? Because this index will help in the end for the swapping. Right? So this is how we are doing it. We will update the minimum and we will update the index. Right? So after traversing all of the elements, right? All of the elements. We are able to get the minimum with, uh, for that particular position and that index also. So what we will do? Simply, after traversing all the right elements in the right subarray, what we will do? We will just swap the elements. So there is an inbuilt function called swap. So we will swap. What we will swap? Array of i and the array of index we have. We will swap these two. This is it. This is the whole report. This is the whole process. We have discussed with the example. We have seen the code of this. So now, if you want to print the array, so we can print it. I less than n. I plus plus. We will just print it out. Sorry, I yes. Okay. So let's try to run this particular thing. So no need of custom input since we are already mentioning the static input over here. Okay, so there is an error. Okay, right. So it will be j less than n. And it is executed. So what is the output we are getting? That is 0138917. For this particular input. So it is the actual sorted manner of this particular set of numbers. So if we just try with some other number that is 21 and let's say 35. Okay, so there are some random numbers, right? So let's see what is the output. Yeah, so it is working correctly. Right. So this is the code for the Selection sort algorithm. Okay, in clear crystal manner, as we have discussed each and every step, not just when executing our own logic. So it is always better to think and code what you are thinking, right? So every question and every question, whether in competitive programming or simple DSA question, just make the approaches and then try to execute what we have just thought. This is the best way.